and one life. Hello, everyone. Let us begin. We have a good turnout today, both in person and and on Zoom. Um, so folks in person are just settling in. And uh, yeah, we had quite a lot of stuff to review for today. Um, I don't think at this point we have any members of the public other than we have with us in person, we have Dave Marcello, of, um, who is the chair of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, he and I had a conversation about recode um, a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, and I particularly urged him to come to the date yet to be determined of our um, session with the select board on the 2019 plan and focused on recode. I'm very much hoping that that's going to be in March. We haven't set a date yet. Glad to see Dave here with us today. And just to let you know, Dave, we have an agenda where we have time in the beginning of the meeting for public comments, but we always hold the meetings fairly informally. And if the members of the public who take the time to come have questions or comments along the way, we're glad to have you, you know, let us know and weigh in. Okay, so moving into our first agenda item, which is our administrative stuff. We have minutes of the January 8th meeting, uh, which was sent out ahead of time. Your volume, your volume, all the way down. I'm, I just, 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 um, so the January 8th, 2024 minutes, um, are there any comments or questions or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, can we just approve those unanimously with a little hand raise? Thank you very much. Wonderful. And as always, thank you, Robin, for taking minutes for us. So the couple of calendar items, um, that we want to make sure um, is on everybody's calendar. And if you can attend, please do. Our monthly workshop this month is going to be on Tuesday, the 20th of February from four to five. And we've cleared that date with Leslie. She's able to come. And what we're going to be doing is talking about any remaining guidance Leslie needs in order to move forward with the revisions of this draft. So that will be an important one if you can come. Um, I mean, assume we're gonna be meeting upstairs in the conference room as usual. Yeah, great. So any thoughts or comments about that before we move on? We have some substantive stuff on that later in the agenda. This is just to make sure it's calendar. Can you repeat the date, Susan? I'm sorry. Sure. Um, it's uh, our regular monthly workshop, which is the 20th of February, third Tuesday, four to five. Okay, and thank you. Yeah, Julie will send out a, a Zoom link. Okay, um, so moving into recode stuff. We first wanted to just do a brief update on um, office hours three, 
which um, normally we would have devoted a couple of hours to this, but it ended up being more and it ended up being in two parts because of a fairly serious snowstorm. So we had two people come on the 16th of January and that was Dave Holman and Brian Banton. And Dave Holman has a project that he would like to do on Union Park Road, a major, I, I think it's really a mixed use, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a multi apartment building. It's a, up to 200 apartments including a few studio apartments, one and two bedroom apartments. And there have been, I think, two workshops now in front of the planning board. Um, and the general, um, what's the word? Uh, reception has been very interested, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we can get into some of that more substantively. But we we heard from him in terms of what he'd like to do, and then we um, we heard from Brian Banton, who owns he and his wife Nadia own property on the corner of <clears throat> Main and Elm, and they would like to build a multi-family unit, which is not allowed there. And um, Leslie was with us for those uh, sessions, for that session. So questions were answered by a knowledgeable person <laughs> and um, and more, you know, uh, more questions have fl flowed by email after that. Um, should we get into that more substantively, I think, um, in terms of the, yeah, but you want to talk about it. Yeah, you want to talk about that today, sure. Yeah, I'm just thinking the because the, now we're into that the aspect of things where I've been making a list of the things that we need to sort of discuss to bring to Leslie. If we can reach a decision today on some of these things, for example, the Dave Holman project. Um, I mean, I don't know how much any of us have paid attention to Union Park Road. I haven't until now. And um, it's an interesting piece of property. It's an interesting shape. And one of the things that Leslie said was that if he um, what rotated the project slightly, um, the the view because he his project his property is right at the crook of the road so it's sort of a, a viewpoint and she said you know instead of looking at the driveway people will look at the building and landscaping and it will the, the view of people driving up or walking up the road will be a positive and he was very receptive um and one of the things that came up is you know, Julie had suggested that this, the, it, right now it's um, Upper Village and that kind of project wouldn't work in terms of the building types. Um, do you want to take it from here a little bit to sure. sort of talk about the limitations and? Sure. Yeah. So I had suggested maybe looking at bringing zoning it to the Crooker District and then Leslie said. Can you guys hear us? She yeah. thought it would be better. Um, more suited to TFM two, and I guess the question I would have is where to draw that boundary. Do we include all of Union Park, or are we just including one side? I I don't know. I don't know where that boundary would be would be drawn. But um, that would be a question. Um, yes. Well, the, the other, um, yeah, that was really the only thing I think that, I mean, you know, his goal is to be able to build, he wants to build five stories. Mm -hmm. I think that definitely, I think 
three and a half is permitted planning board uh, site review, four and a half would be permitted. Mm -hmm. So five, he wants to do an elevator building. He said there will be nice views from that building. Um, and it sounds like if, if we're gonna do a, a building that tall, that would not be a bad place to put it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how, how that's gonna go. But when I looked at that zone, I mean, what Leslie has told us about you know, how she sees the distinction between Topson Fair Mall 1 and Topson Fair Mall 2. It, it's an odd um, uh, sort of extension of Topson Fair Mall 2 throughout that whole upper village on the other side of 196. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense that it's a mixed use area with some residential possibilities. It's residential now. Um, it, it don't know how long that's going to be. And it's the car dealership. And then it sort of extends over quite a ways. So that, I mean, that's something that, um, I don't know if, if folks have the map and have looked at that map. Um, it's it's an interesting thing when you think about, okay, that where to, where Union Park Road is and make that whole section of the upper village on the other side of 196, Tops and Fair Mall 2. Does that make sense to folks? And what's, uh, what's pressing this forward is that they're look, the developers are asking for solutions to the, to the zoning right. next month, March, I think mid-March or something is what they were saying. Mm -hmm. And um, the planning board, actually it's been the three meetings that we've had uh, on this issue with the planning board. Wow. And, and wow. the planning board keeps saying, well, because of because of that, you know, I mean, we just have a matter of weeks now, you know, and they're looking for a simple solution. And boy, we, we, we've, been, we've been discussing, any, we've been discussing, I've got at least five different areas of solutions that we've gotten into. None of them simple. No, because none of them other simple. problems kind of come up when we address one thing, seems like there's we notice other things in the ordinance that maybe need to be remedied. Yeah, and then the developers <laughs> um offered something very interesting in the last meeting, and that was and they gave a handout about it, and that was um a way for developers to earn what was called amenity points mm -hmm. uh, for development extras that they would uh, build, such as underground parking with electrical vehicle charging, uh, contiguous landscaped outdoor open space, art features, water features, pet exercise areas, heated drives or, or sidewalks that would melt snow. And they safer. offered those. Yes, they came up and offered them and offered wow. those. And um, the board had asked for um, uh, a, um, a, a a table, a simpler table yeah. for it. But again, as Julie pointed out at the meeting, I mean, that's a great, you know, instead of using the stick, you're offering the yeah. carrot mm -hmm. and saying, you know, you can earn these points and you could you could increase your density or you could do other things that you're that really would benefit the town. Right. Um, and we have one more, I guess one more yeah, works. scheduled meeting and we're getting into the weeds. Yeah. We've gotten into the weeds. <laughs> I'm lost in the weeds. In order to get yeah. into public hearing in May, we really only have time for one more workshop. One more workshop. You gotta nail it down. And I see a hand from Rick. So, so I have I have a little bit of heartburn with redrawing the boundaries. Um, specifically in response to a specific project and you know just a question for thought is if this if this development was proposed at 99 May would we be considering rezoning 99 May in this top compared to to meet the requirements and so what I you know I have no problem doing it if it makes sense but you know we're as this committee, our job, we're not the planning board to solve the issues with this one thing. Right. I would say that 
if we want to start opening the discussion of boundaries, we have a more comprehensive workshop about okay, well, are we fine with the boundaries where they're at, or defer boundary shifts to this next public comment period after the next draft versus jumping right in, saying we're trying to, to accommodate this project, it would make sense to shift our boundaries now. Or if we do want to shift them, okay, does it make sense here? Is there other areas where we want to be shifting boundaries because there was similar discussions up in Upper Village and right on 196? I'm not following that last little part. So Union Place is only, we're only looking at that one little corner because that's where this proposal came from. Are there other little corners we should be revisiting? I see. Okay. And start holding them. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's and another, another I, uh, sticking point is that you really don't want to get into spot zoning. Right. But right. The, right. Planning board, so, the planning board doesn't right. want to get into spot zoning. Right. right. And, I, and, and, uh, so you're looking for something that you know can be applied more broadly. I, I more would broadly. I would I would rather defer boundaries until the next round during the public comment period and use this as an opportunity to say, okay, how do we work with the draft code provisions for changing boundaries, changing regulations, changing things in the future? If it makes sense, I don't. I don't disagree with that, but um, then the planning board basically has to say no because of the right. deadline that the developers have. Yeah, the deadline the developer has to meet. The planning board is working with the current yeah. regulations, and that's mm -hmm. what they need to be following. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's right. yeah, yeah. That that unless I misunderstand this, even if we were all in agreement to change the boundaries, it doesn't in fact. Uh, right. It's still until this is adopted. It doesn't do the, that developer. It doesn't do the developer any good. But I think what we're thinking about is, you know, we're we're moving in a certain direction in terms of greater density and more mixed use development. And sometimes it's it's not until a project comes about. I mean, we you know we. We're thinking about there was a sketch for 99 Main, and which is right across the street here. Mm -hmm. And that project was part of what persuaded us to shift the um, the limit of the MPD from three acres or four acres to six acres, right? Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it, it, it's only as questions arise that you might, I mean. I started off by saying I didn't pay any attention to Union Park Road. Um, and, you know, it's not until you start paying attention to a certain area that you might say, well, it, it's character. And this is what Leslie did for us. She said the character of Park Road is, is quite different than Cops and Fair Mall itself. Mm -hmm. And so she said, I think we should distinguish that. And we did. Um, and but part of why that happened is a multifamily project of 80 units was proposed, and it made us think, well, you know, it's it's quite close to other residential buildings, and we would like to encourage that and and not storefronts and retail. So, you know, as projects come up, you're absolutely right that this project is not going to benefit from anything we do right now. But we want to, I think, make decisions as best we can in a far-sighted way so that we're going to be happy with the code for a while and not have to change it right away. It's a good, great aspiration, Susan. And what occurs to me is that sometimes it's a vision of the developer that kind of makes us see a part of town in a new way, which is kind of in this this particular situation. So I think we can really benefit and we don't, I mean, that hopefully we don't discourage people from having that great vision. But I, I think we're right in this kind of wedge zone between trying to get this new recode 
ready to present to the community and having having to work with the existing tools and that. Can you comment? Yeah. Um, back on the slide. If you could use the microphone oh, sure. only because um, and make sure it's on, Dave, if you would, because otherwise folks um, on Zoom won't be able to hear you. What's on the microphone? Speak into it and see what happens. Okay, so can you hear me? <laughs> can folks on Zoom hear him? Yeah, yeah okay. great. That's great. All right. Um, you know, if you look at this from do you want to be a town that jumps to every new developer's ideas and create and every time they come up with something, oh yeah, we'll change the ordinance to meet your need, your needs. Is that when we when you sell this to the town and we sold this like in 2019 on, on, the, on the overall uh, comp plan, you know, people may not envision five-story buildings. And you know, and, and you might get a lot of uh, feedback that you may not want if you start changing things too quickly just to meet some developers' ideas that you think they work because you want the developer to put money into the town. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of it's a slippery slope. You know, you, you start to you know, you know, giving up here, you know, to get something that maybe not everybody wanted to. And, we, and I know, you know, it's unfortunate this town we have town meetings, like 100 people show up, you know, it's not like everybody's involved. And uh, I was on a comp plan, the first comp plan we did a few years back. And you don't get a lot of feedback from people, but until the, they find something they don't like, <laughs> and you get all the feedback you really don't want. So I'm just saying that, you know, it, you, you got to kind of say, was this some, is five story buildings we really want? Can you even support a five story building with the fire department? Um, that question has come up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you have to, you know, that's a, that's a big thing, you know, it means you because we don't have like the city the ladder truck they have, and right, it's running because they have a ladder truck now, they need to you know, those type of things yeah. all of you consider. Yeah. Well, gen generally speaking, uh, I agree with you, and I think why, why this particular development is getting so much attention is that really, except for a few areas in it, it, it can be a model to what the comprehensive plan is asking for. You know, open yeah, guess, green, yes. open yeah. greenery space. I mean, it, it, the, the list. You know, multi multi family well, units. When, when you're losing, you now you have more traffic. You have more parking areas. You know, all of these little things that. Oh you know, yeah. The neighborhood, which is right next behind them, right? The whole a bunch of streets behind them. You know, they're the ones that are selling them. Yeah, the neighborhood. They may get feedback you didn't really want. Well, that that is true, and I I think we're we're between. Um, so thank you. Yeah. For your comment. Um, okay. And I think where we are in terms of, you know, Robin's uh, comment in terms of sometimes you don't really see the possibilities in a certain area until a development developer suggests a project. And then there's this other side where, of course, you don't want to be sort of jumping to the, the ideas, every idea that comes along. Um, but clearly, this is an idea that's a little bit compelling if the planning board has devoted three workshops to it. Um, Everyone is so in support of it. Um, so far. So far. <laughs> so, well, there, because there are, if I may mean, jump in. Yes, yeah, please. sure. Uh, and, uh, because one of the possible <coughs> workarounds or whatever is to change the density requirements for the zone that it is currently in, which would affect all of that zone. And so it's not just, you know, it's not spot zoning because right. it's just right. affecting everywhere within that. So there are repercussions for doing that. If you say, okay, we'll change it for this zone, then what does somebody else do that's also in that zone? And how ex how large is that zone right now? Because I'm so focused on our new proposed zones that I'm not upper village. I mean, it's the um, same the same village center. Okay. Okay. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So that's one of the possibilities being considered right. to change the density requirements. Yeah. And of course, Union Park is not a, not just this property. 
but you have the auto parts store, you have the Atlantic Federal Credit Union. Right. Also in New York. Yeah. yeah. And I, I see a hand on Zoom. Angela? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, this is sort of a messy period, right? We're in the middle of our process. We're surely not going to be done in time for what I understand are the time constraints of this developer right now. And the planning board has their job to do in the meantime, right? They are doing their job. They're trying to be diligent and look at the comprehensive plan and where our draft plan sits. But we just don't, we can't predict where we're going to end up. We still have some drafting to do. We still have more public comment. And I think while it's great, we're trying to coordinate. I feel like the planning board is doing their job. They're going to do what they do. And then we need to decide how to incorporate that into our final proposal in recode. And we're confusing jobs of CPIC and planning board. I feel like if we go too far trying to change what we're doing right now in reaction to this project, in the end, we're going to have to make a decision about what to do with this area and consider whatever it is the planning board decides to do. But I just feel like it's important to distinguish the now job of the planning board and our job with a timeline that goes beyond that. Right. No, that's helpful. Yeah. That's very helpful. And at the same time, you know, it wasn't until this project came up. And of course, Leslie's listening to their pitch. She actually took time to create her own sketch. She shared it with the developers. Um, and in the course of that was when she suggested you know, that that this particular area fits well with the zone that is proposed for Thompson Fair Mall 2. Um, so that's, it's coming up here now, knowing that we have no say in that project, but that if we, and, and you know, I'm hearing on one side, don't change any zoning boundaries right now. I think that's, the question to weigh in on is when when Leslie weighed in and said this it would make sense to change this area to Topsom Fair Mall too. Are we persuaded by that, or would we rather not? Do, my my feeling is if we're going to change something, now's the time to do it rather than big changes later. Um, there there will be more public comment, that, you know, a lot and, and workshops with the planning board and select board. Um, and the open house. Um, but if we're going to do something, um, this is not a, this is a good time to do it so that when the new draft comes out and with red lines and map changes. Um, so I'd love to hear anybody else who has an opinion on that. And if you haven't had time to think about it, that's fine. But I'd love to just hear anybody, everybody else's thoughts. Can I, I'll just add my opinion um, <laughs> that I'm totally open to considering that, but I haven't seen, and I, I, sorry if I missed it in my email, a proposed new map on what that could look like or options. Like I just don't have that in front of me. So I don't feel like I have, um, that I'm able to make that decision and carefully yeah. weigh repercussions and make sure it meshes with what we heard in the comp plan. So right. I'm okay with doing it. I just don't think I have what I need to do it today. Right. It was only just, I mean, we. I think we've all looked at the current proposed map for recode, right? Where we drew in certain boundaries and whatever. But so what it would be is the area in Upper Village that's on the, I don't know, it's east or west. <laughs> On the other side of 196 from town office, um, you know, on the on the Union Park Road side of 196, that that uh, currently it is Upper Village, that that area right there with, um, is it Toyota or Lee Nissan? Toyota. Toyota. Yeah, Toyota. Lee Toyota is th that area. That that would be Thompson Fair Mall two zone instead of Upper Village. Um, and, and, you know, it does take some thinking about. So if we're not prepared, it might be helpful for people to think about that and come if you can for the one hour workshop on Tuesday, the 20th. Um, Leslie will be, it, it's, it's not an hour never, but it is a moment when decisions that go into this 
set of revisions will be made. Um, what would be helpful to me to be able to come to that meeting on the 20th informed would yeah. be a proposed new map, what the revised map would look like with this change, and then a list of uses that were not allowed in the whatever upper village that would be allowed in Topsom Fair Mall too. So I can know, okay, that's going to allow a car wash and a liquor store and all these things, but it doesn't now. I would need to kind of know that. And without, if I could do it without doing a lot of research on my own, that would be awesome. I could, I could do that. Julie can do that. Because she's awesome. <laughs> over and over again. Okay. Thank you, Angela, for, you know, for being specific about what you need to make that kind of, to come informed with a decision. Joe. Conceptually, I have no difficulty with with changing that, but I want to uh, go back to something Rick said. If we're going to consider that, uh, should we be considering other uh, other changes that have been discussed? And one in particular that comes to mind that made sense to me at the time, but we decided not to act on it. Was I can't I think it was in the lower end of Middle Village. There was a, a substantial residential lot that uh, was either Tedford or uh, uh, there, there was a proposal for yeah. affordable mm -hmm. housing. Yeah. It could only be possible if we had rolled that into the zone. And we said, let's not make any changes to to boundaries. Now we can always do that. Do that later. And that's one that I, I felt really had merit. And again, with housing being such a presser, pressing need, yeah. I would be, uh, we, we might want to consider <laughs> the slippery slope. Yes. But that was a project that yeah. was outside of Thompson Center. Too, right. Right? right. That that gets off Main Street um, and gets into what is. It's directly you, behind right, and yeah. connect. I mean, in a, in a bus. In a bus, but yeah. it is not it's on true. Main Street. It's true. And that's the, I mean, you know, when you have criteria, it's like it either has stop? infrastructure yeah. or it doesn't. It's either on Main Street or it doesn't. Yeah. And I, it, it's interesting, but that was, yeah, we're trying to make some calls. Mm -hmm. Pam or Robin or Andy? Want to weigh in on? Well, I'm still, I'm still getting my feet wet and learning about this. But what comes to mind is this email from Mr. Blanton, who wants you to change. Yeah. Where he is. Yeah. We change one. Yeah. You established a precedent. Yeah. Do we want to do that? It has to make sense for the zone. I mean, it has to really make sense for our vision. Yeah. It has to directly link back to our vision from the comp plan. Otherwise. Which is spot zone. And I'll, I'll bring it up now because I'll probably bring it up again later. So some advanced thought on it because it also, you know, we carve out that area just north of this where the uh, apartment housing is currently in the Karate Center restored, mm -hmm. that whole area. Okay. Except we're not touching that right. because we're not touching stuff that's currently zoned as residential. But that's another area that's prime. Well, that is very comparable to you know the village center, upper village area that we're talking about. And then right yeah. butts the union place parcel we're talking about. So now does that open up the can work and say, oh wait, well, yeah, I know what it is now, but is that maybe what it should be? So so this is a whole yeah. boundary thing that I think we really need to be clear about what was our charter the comp plan how did we establish these boundaries in the first place and justify why we're changing them not just from a, from a specific right are we, are we I mean yeah okay is there anybody who's at the meeting now who knows that they can't come on the 20th I'll, I'll be traveling traveling okay so Robin um, maybe I'll have to log in on Zoom. If I okay. Bus yeah. Yeah. Great. But everybody else, it seems, sounds we can. All right. Well, it, you know, I think the, the caution around opening the can of worms is heard. 
Okay, so that's that's the boundary issue. Um, let's move on to there are a few other things that came up in that. Um, the maximum units um, in that first, um, right now, it's a, it's a matter of stories. So it's not even units because that's not what the code says, but in terms of what would be possible is three and a half stories. And what he wants to do is four stories, I think. You're talking about New York oh, still. No, we're talking about um, lower village. Yeah. yeah. As far as I'm concerned, we're finished with the Union Park. Okay. I dare. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. He wanted four stories? No, or he wants six units. He wants six units, okay. three stories. Yeah. Okay. And right now, I think he can get two and a half stories. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. I mean, right now, he can't Cause do anything with his parcel. But, right. But yes. yes. I mean, that's the irony, I guess, is that he, um, right now, be, with the current code, he can't build on that parcel at all um, because of, you know, the, the square footage that you need in order to build. Um, that will be done away with if the new code is approved. And the question is, what will be allowed there? He's looked at the building types. And, um, you know, there was a, a good, robust discussion. Um, in terms of roof types, and Leslie realizes that a little bit more needs to be um, sort of re re entered into the draft code um, around roof types. A lot of those illustrations were removed. Um, so I think she's planning to do some of that. Um, but none of the rest of it, um, you. you you, if you could speak to it, because you spoke, you looked into the Main Street Village plan, right? And that's that goes back to what two thousand and seven, eight, and it sets certain priorities for the area. And then the current comp plan on top of that looks at density, but it also looks at uh, sort of some level of conformity with current style of buildings. The Main so. Street Village plan very much speaks to the character of Middle Village and wanting to maintain that character, which is more in line with single family homes. But it allows for some, you know, smaller multi families, two or two, three, four units. Um, whereas so the, the comp plan pushes for higher density in Thompson Center, but it's not um, specific as to the different zoning districts. So Brian's argument in his email was, this is keeping you know, with the comprehensive plan that I wanna build this multifamily in Middle Village, but the comp plan doesn't say in Middle Village, you should be able to build a big multifamily apartment building. Right. Um, the Main Street plan advises against it, I would say. Um, and then he also mentioned that in the call plan that his property was in Lower Village, which the only reason it it looks like that is because there were some um, changes to that area proposed in the call plan showing the, the terminus of Elm Street being moved northward huh. and providing green space in front of the church. And kind of showing showing Elm Street going through his vacant parcel, mm. and then keeping everything south of Elm Street in Lower Village. And as we were careful to say at many points, the drawings in the comp plan, the 2019 comp plan, are not prescriptive; they are just illustrative. And so that doesn't mean that that's what we should do: shift Elm Street in that way um, through their property. Um, and one of the things, you know, I think he's looked very carefully at some of the other buildings around and he was under the impression that there are some five unit buildings. And in fact, there are not. There are some, a few, not many, four unit buildings. Um, and so that's that's in keeping with the, the character of the area. And I would say that the, the comp plan advocates advocates for 
missing middle housing as well, which is, would be two, three, four unit uh, buildings. And that's something that we would want to see more of in Middle Village, but nothing. Right. Any comments on that? Do you know how many apartments are in the big yellow antique house? That's on the other side of the square. Yes. According to the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts before you move on? If I may ask, how does the historic district play into this? Or is it really in a historic district? There are signs that say there is. And there is one, sure. yeah. yeah. And I mean, they have to review everything prior to right. coming through development review. So. Yeah. But does it affect anything to see if it's doing with regard to? Their requirements would trump CPIC requirements according to the ordinance. Yeah. Okay, are we ready to move on just a few inches? Um, my list of other things that Leslie will be looking for. Um, oh, so we move on to the next office hours, which uh, was attended by Jim Howard and Kurt Neufeld. Um, and it was held here at the uh, in the second floor conference room. There was a lot of discussion around, um, I, mean, you, you, I think people have seen, uh, Leslie took, uh, Julie took great notes. Um, so anybody who's looked at those notes, you know, has seen what was said and what was emphasized. Um, there are a lot of things that Jim likes a lot in the code, what we're trying to do but his sort of general refrain is that he is looking for more flexibility in a number of ways. And there was a focus on um, parking structures, where those can be and where those need to be, um, materials for projects and what has to match in certain things, um, and open space requirements. I think those were the things that I picked up as you know, are, are there changes that we want to make? Um, I think Leslie will be very clear in the areas that she would be, will be looking, you know, for any changes that we want. So any folks, I, I'm assuming people have read those notes. Um, those are pretty important sets, you know, that's important feedback. Um, I think the, the subtext that I took away from that was that Jim really, what he really would like to see are design guidelines as opposed to requirements. Uh, and certainly the, the specifics that you just mentioned, I think were the hot button, uh, yeah. the hot button issues. Um, I, having looked through the, uh, the draft of the, the design guidelines for Cook's Corner. I was very impressed with the document, but I'm not clear, Julie, maybe you can help with this. I'm not clear two things. One is what's the definition of the Cook's Corner area? I didn't, I saw maps. There is but, a map, yeah. But did it, it didn't show an outline, I didn't think. Um, I'll go back and look at okay. it again. But the other one is, is, is this implemented? It, is there kind of a separate entity like there is with Brunswick Landing that uh, oversees the implementation of this, or is this a planning board, Brunswick it's Planning it's Board? It's board. Planning That's board. what I thought. It's been. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Jim did give us, uh, a, you know, a, an example where there are, you know, he's in favor of guidelines like they have in Brunswick design guidelines, um, but he also gave us a quote from another developer, of course, unnamed, you know, saying that, you know, we're not going to, we're not priority real estate group, and we're not going to be doing um, what they're going to be doing. Um, so, you know, we know that, you know, different developers will have different emphasis and, and uh, priorities, and, you um, his feedback is very valuable. And at the same time, 
I think sometimes what when, when he focuses on things, he, what he he sees these things as requirements, but what he misses is the uh, the flexibility option that is built into the code. And you know, we all we were all able to come away from that session realizing you can go through the planning board if you're not going to have you know be completely in line with this code. There, there is a way out, and you go before the planning board with some exceptions. So um, those are built in. Um, we know that that's been part of what, what we will need to do. Do we know in Brunswick, when they have these guidelines, what happens if a developer doesn't follow the guidelines? Like, what is the stop? there you know we have requirements not guidelines so what happens in brunswick there's guidelines if a developer wants to use a material that isn't in the guidelines do they just use what they want like what happens i think there is pushback from the planning board does it i don't think they necessarily they have the ability to stop the project i think but i don't i I don't know when that's happened in the past. I couldn't, I couldn't point to a time. Yeah. And then oh. that's putting too much pressure on the planning board, which is what we're trying to get away from and make things clear to everyone so that there's not so many subjective calls being placed upon the planning board. Right. And we were fortunate in having a member of the planning board attend that office hour session and uh and got put on the spot yes <laughs> awesome uh, as far as uh and i if i if i may I mean, my thought is Please. is that you don't want to just have you know loose guidelines and say and i'm not you know saying anything about jim at all yeah. you know but jim may not be around forever I don't think I'm going to be around forever. None of us could be around forever. So you have to have what the vision is as far as what you want here is, and have your your setup and your guide and not guidelines, mm -hmm. but more strict standards as far as what is going to be developed. Because uh, I mean, I'm thinking last year we had a zoning report, um, proposal say, Let's rezone this land and trust us. Right. And you know, yes. yeah, maybe you can trust somebody. You know, maybe we can trust Jim to build build what we should. Right. Uh, or you know, what we envision. But I don't. I don't. After years of experience, I don't necessarily have to trust. Right. And I re I remember asking Jim, saying that my my primary concern has always been. It, it, it isn't people, developers like Jim, who are well intentioned. It's the ones who aren't and just want to do the cheapest thing possible. If if you don't have standards, if you just have guidelines, I think that's what you're saying, Larry. Yeah. That that uh, you lose control. The uh, yeah. the main Supreme Court has also weighed in on this on on vague subjective guidelines. Mm -hmm. Uh, they call them unco uh, unconstitutionally vague and subjective, and um, and they've given examples. For example, will be in harmony with the comprehensive plan. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, you can too vague and you can go to the comprehensive plan and you can you can build a case around pretty much anything from that. Shall meet the approval of the board. Well, okay, uh, will not adversely affect the health, safety, or general welfare. Will be compatible with existing uses. So there's a legal side to this too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we often uh, have the lawyers review uh, our uh, zoning ordinances because the guidance and the standards are simply that. They're vague, subjective guidelines. Yeah. So Thank the, you. The, the, the ordinances are much more specific and much more constitutional. Angela, did you want to weigh in on that? Yeah. Well, I, after hearing this conversation, I just wonder, um, you know, I really value the feedback from Jim. He is a really thoughtful developer and isn't, in my experience with him, just thinking about himself and his project right. really cares about Topsom. 
So I'm wondering if the flexibility he's looking for could be um, placed in this uh, category of what you were talking about, the recode has for, the planning board has, you know, discretion or how, whatever the wording is in these areas. And have we carefully outlined that for Jim and gotten his feedback on saying, this is where we see the opportunity for flexibility and um, giving developers opportunity to be creative, to implement things in a different way. And I'm curious if we've done that, what he had to say about that. We haven't done that yet, but as a result, I think of this conversation on the 1st of February, um, I think Leslie said, you know, we, we should sort of include in the code something right up front that points out the flexibility options um, yeah. that people may be looking for and make that more clear. I do know that from what he has said, um, you know, Jim and I'm sure others are looking very eagerly for the red line um, yeah. of the code when it comes out. Yeah, well, I, I agree that that's a really good step forward. It, you know, we're listening to Jim and we're trying to find a solution that could provide flexibility, but also clear, um, you know, standards. Uh, right. In the events. right, okay, let's see how we're doing on time here. So I think all of those other items the parking structure materials and open space. I, I think those are all things that Leslie is very um, sort of cognizant of where some of those shifts need to happen. And we will have that discussion on the on the 20th. Um, okay, moving on to the next bullet, which is update on planning board, recode, cleanup, all that. Um, we're moving along in uh, Chugging along. Yeah. Yes. We have had numerous uh, workshops around conditional use permit criteria, and we will have another one next week. Uh, planning board is looking for more criteria, more objective criteria for conditional uses. Um, so we'll re be reviewing that, and then we'll also need an, at least one more workshop. Um, to review dimensional tables because we've had some issues okay. with, with those. Yeah. Um, dimensional tables. Mm. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Just with the different standards, um, actually our existing dimensional table has huh. been the biggest problem. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not the proposed one. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we'll just need to review those. And, okay. Um, and probably one final go through of, of the document to make sure we captured everything that we talked about changing, but. So is there a proposed dimensional table I can take a stand at? <laughs> is there a proposed one? Yeah. Okay. Well, there are proposed tables in, in the repo and oh. in the code for now. Okay. And it sounds like that hasn't been the focus yet right. of the workshop. Coming, Correct. coming. Right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions, comments? Go ahead. Where does that put the schedule as far as releasing Kirk and Leslie to put out the revised draft and release that for public comment? If Leslie's draft is going to be for Shepherd, yeah. Mm -hmm. what? But, but in rolling it out to the public, it needs to be. All together, at once, together. Yeah. So I guess my question mm -hmm. is, yeah, where is that with the multiple workshops? Where is that? But I'm that, hoping that by the end of March we'll be done with our workshops with the code cleanups. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's a perfect segue to the next bullet, which is really to sort of review our my milestones and time. Can I just do? <laughs> I missed the last meeting, so I just wanted to. I just had a question about where the planning board is with recode and conditional use. Have they had all of their workshops and they're all settled on conditional use or is there opportunity for further input? No, we're, these, further input. we're gonna have another workshop mm -hmm. next week on conditional use. Okay, and did this committee, we have we, I'm sorry, I didn't make the last meeting, but the did we weigh in on our desire to have less conditional use because 
it meets our goal of being clearer about things? I'm not sure how the weighing happened, but I think it, the weighing did happen to in terms of um, there is a search for more objective standards, more objective criteria for conditional use. And less less need for less opportunities for conditional use, or are they just having it everywhere still? We are we're looking at limiting the number of them as well. Right. Thanks for that question. <laughs> Scott has been a big proponent of that. And there are differences of opinion with regard to what should be conditional use and what should not. Okay. Does it feel like you're sort of working toward consensus? Or... I think we're working toward consensus. Would you, would you agree, yeah. Julie? I mean, I think, I think Scott would be, and I don't want to speak for him, but I think he would say no conditional uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I'd say that too. <laughs> <laughs> but we all compromise. <laughs> we all Compromise well, you say, if you important. say no conditional use, then you say no planning board. So how about no seatback, Angela? Not <laughs> true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> you gotta say employed here somehow. We are, we are fully <laughs> committed to compromise. Yes. But I think there's a compromise on conditional use. Yeah. 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 I, I think to answer your question directly, Angela, is there hasn't really been a weigh in from this committee. Basically, the, the planning board workshops and this can be have been working separately, separately yeah. and not, there's not been a way in or real exchange back and forth at all. So. This committee has not shown up at those meetings to weigh in in that way. Pete Bono attends every planning board meeting and every workshop. And I know for a fact that there is some weighing in going on there. <laughs> And um, I think it's been excellent, you know, and so, so it's, it, it's a process. It, that's a big piece. That's a big change that we're, we've been looking for. Um, and it, it sounds like it's moving forward, which is great. And I, would, and I would say the planning board is aware of uh, that way in yeah. as informally as, yeah. as it is. Yeah. Uh, Susan, you've been to planning board workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Yep, in the past. Yep. Don't have to go anymore. <laughs> I'm still <delighted>. um, <laughs> So why don't we look at the milestones and time frame? Because um there may be, you know, what what I've used now is, you know, we, we sort of created um a calendar working back from something like a January um special town meeting and what needs to happen between now and then and what's realistic. And Julie um, emailed that outline of the, the time frame to Kirk and Leslie. And there have been no questions really raised about that. Um, so, you know, the, the, the next, so we've had our um, office hours and We'll have that discussion. Do you want to speak up, Angela, before we? Well, I have. I just have a question about a January town meeting to pass a really substantial piece of zoning um, ordinance. And just living here a long time, how that often isn't well received. And just wanting to make sure that the town manager and others have fully vetted that timeline concept. That was actually, you know, I'm, I'm glad you raised that because th that's that's exactly what we brought to the town manager and assistant town manager. And um, that was their suggestion that this particular, um, um, the thought was to have it in, a, in November mm -hmm. um, because there is a town meeting that happens in November. And we thought it would it could work as, as part of that warrant. And um, it, the suggestion was very strongly given that that's not something that we want to put on that budget, on that warrant, um, that it should stand alone. Um, 
So that that was actually the, the recommendation of the town manager and assistant town manager that we go with a special town meeting in January. I feel I feel comfortable as long as that it did came from them and not this committee. There have been, I'm sure you know many of you, um, you know, people have criticized uh, special town meetings, putting substantive ordinance changes on special town meetings because they feel like attendance won't be as big as regular town meeting time in May and that you're somehow trying to short circuit public participation. I don't agree with that, but I think that it's important that, you know, we understand that there are people who, who have said that in the past when things have been brought forward off cycle. Right. I think part of what, what I've seen happen is I mean, there, in um, the, the town code, um, you know, we, there's a certain notice period for special town meetings, and occasionally that is just just met. Um, I would hope that for this particular town meeting, there would be well in advance lots of notice so that there's, you know, nobody can miss that this is happening. Um, that, I mean, that's part of our job, but also it, we will work very closely with the town manager and assistant town manager to make sure that happens um, and use um, some means that we may not have used so far. Postcards, perhaps, <laughs> mail to every family. Um, did you have a comment? Right? Yeah, I have yeah. a comment too. Say, you know, the whole public engagement piece of this is still something we need to enter into. And I to just suggest that maybe that's part of the public feedback. That's right. That's what, right. What is, you know, public's perception on timing mm -hmm. and delivery for voting on it? Yeah. November, November would have been at the same time as the presidential election. Right. And they would have been voting on that. And you would have had a large turnout in the vote. Right. Special town meeting in January. I think you're going to be lucky if you get 10 people to attend. Well, and maybe and, 20. Right. But just just because the special the, the, the November town meeting is the national election and right. with all that comes with that. Um, was the very strong suggestion by the town manager to not put this on. Right, because you you'd have yeah. too great a turnout. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I don't think that was the reason. I think it was because it was very, very, I, I, you know. I, I question a January town meeting, special town meeting, you're not going to get a lot of people coming out for it. And I think that's either a recipe for failure or recipe for complete passage. And, and, yeah. In yeah. my opinion, November isn't the normal time that this town has town meeting either. I think that the regular time when people expect to see things like this is at our May town meeting. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I agree. I would think if we we did our, our public outreach and made everybody aware okay. that this is happening, that those that are interested will will come out. Effort. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it has to be built into our public engagement process, mm -hmm. which, you know, let's just run down some of these next steps in terms of the milestones, um, which is um, we're hoping to have the code cleanup done by, let's say, the end of March, mm -hmm. right? It, it had said the, the 15th, but say the 31st of March, end of March. April is going to be devoted to um, releasing the, the town center revised code um, and then workshops of the town center form based code in the planning board and the select board in April. Possibly going into early May, but I'm, we're hoping April. May is the sort of kickoff of our public engagement process at town meeting. It will simply let people coming to town meeting for what's already on the warrant know that this is coming up. Now, this is so I checked with the library. Um, it feels like it's well in advance of June, but of course, that's our library is a busy place. There were two dates available on a Saturday, 
And only one of those is a date that our planner, who is crucial to this process, um, is available. So June 1st is the date that the library is available for our public engagement, our open house. We need to get that date to Kirk and Leslie and confirm it with, is there anybody in this meeting today who, I mean, it's a date that stands out June 1st. So if it's, if you know you're gonna be in Aruba or something, <laughs> speak now. <laughs> Okay, it works for all. Of us. <laughs> uh, but, I have, <laughs> I can't be there, but you should not plan around me. That's um, I have a couple of high school graduations that weekend. Uh huh. So you'll be right here, but you'll be busy with um, yeah. Well, no, no they're relatives in other oh, places okay. that my yeah. nieces are graduating. Okay. But if you are unlikely to find a date that we can all make. <laughs> That's probably true. That is probably true. And the thought of finding other space, I think is uh, not an attractive thought. Okay, so that takes us through town meeting, which is not listed, that date is not listed on the town website, but I have a feeling it's the 22nd of May. And then we're talking about June 1st as our open house and in August, the complete new code, both pieces together, all of it, going to the planning board for workshops. I saw multiple workshops. <laughs> um, we could take bets on how many we need. <laughs> I'm guessing three. Um, three money on that, Susan? No, no money. <laughs> Um, and then uh, September, um, planning board public hearing, October, November, select board public hearing, and January special town meeting, weather permitting. Uh, have we run this timeline at any, uh, at any level past the select board? No, we've run it by the town manager and assistant town manager. Mm -hmm. I would I would recommend before we get any further along that you get the select board to weigh in that they're okay with this being on a January special town meeting, only because historically, the members who felt strongly about this are no longer on the um, select board, but there have been select board members who may have strong feelings about this. Good point. Thank you. Okay, any other comments about our timeline as it's laid out? So just to let you catch everything. So September, there's a planning board public hearing, then after that, select board public hearing? Yep. October? Or? October, November. Yep. I'll just echo that the timeline seems very tight for soliciting and incorporating public feedback. Yeah. I agree. And I'm just gonna put out there, <laughs> if I was queen for a day, I would say that we should be on next May's town meeting. Any other folks think that? It makes sense to me. That's when people expect big things, big ticket items to be coming up. And yeah, we also have a lot of people that leave in the winter, you know, and they would they yeah. not be aware. It's just not a time when people are thinking about big changes happening in the town. And yeah. it gets dark early, it's icy, it could be a blizzard. <laughs> mm -hmm. do, I, do I want to bundle up and go out or do I enjoy yeah. the fire in the fireplace? All good points. <laughs> Any other folks on Zoom want to weigh in? I think we've lost Andy. Are you nodding, Margaret? Yeah, and I'm just thinking about um, having the summer time being our time to incorporate feedback might also be difficult to meet. Yeah. Even, even the appearance of trying to uh, ram things through, if you will, would not be good. 
I, I thought this process was going to be over a couple of years ago. So <laughs> going to May of 25 is a, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny because we're, you know, I forget when it was talking with Leslie one of these times when we all got together and uh she's she shared about a couple of other projects that are taking a lot longer than ours. Um, but I felt better. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we don't want to be in a position where we are even perceived mm -hmm. as trying to rush things. Okay, I see lots of nods. Thank you. Um, we have a few more minutes. Um, I don't know if anyone has made contact with their uh, town department or committee, commission, whatever. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Joe has met with this community center. Community yes. center. Yes. Great. Uh, it was a very, uh, very robust uh, meeting. Um, it was, as an overview, I was very impressed with uh, the, the clarity of the direction that they're going. And I really felt having been involved with similar committees in the past. I think they're they're as a yeah they're doing the right right thing. Great. Um, the, the let me see if I can hit the high points uh, here. Um, the consensus this is based on uh, the focus groups and uh, Mark Walsh gave me a printout of of, of what was said there, which I breeze through, I have a, can't say I've memorized it, but basically uh, the general consensus is that some building, some community center is needed for Thompson. The real question is what exactly that that is. And um, one of the things that uh, that is coming into focus apparently, uh, everybody wants everybody. The high priority for a lot of people was the swimming pool. It also was the highest cost, both in terms of uh, construction and maintenance. So it's uh, it's it's diminishing in its importance uh, because of that, uh, but it, it's still still on the table. Uh, the report that they are putting together for the select board is to basically to find what Thompson needs uh, as opposed to wants and what is the cost burden to the to the residents. Uh, the surveys uh, they, they there was a lot of time spent on uh, on how to put together a survey that would be most uh, most effective, reach the broadest uh, part of the community possible. And um, they wanted to be in place uh, by uh, by March. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing that was brought up, <clears throat> which which uh, I, again I was very pleased to see, is to distinguish between how to pay for construction versus how to pay for operating costs. Um, because obviously that's uh, going to be an ongoing thing long after, long after the whatever is built, as soon as something's built, is yeah. you know, finished. Um, one one idea for the uh, uh, the survey was to uh, allow everybody responding to the survey to have a hundred points that they could allocate. <laughs> To the various functions that uh, that have been proposed for the community center, uh, as a way of determining uh, the, the the priorities. <clears throat> the sticking point with that is how do you how do you weigh that uh, uh, with uh, with actual costs? I mean, it's one thing to say I really want this. Uh, but it's not as meaningful if you don't also say 
say what it's going to cost so you know what the consequences are for your choice. So that that remained, I believe, somewhat somewhat open as to how they were going to do it. Um, the last survey, the initial one, was very open-ended. It established what people want. Now it's focused on what is needed and what does it cost, which I said earlier. Um, it was also brought up the possibility of an endowment for the building uh, that would be uh, be achieved through fundraising. Um, it also was the possibility of a multi-phase project, uh, build a core building with the understanding that at some future date, other uh, design it with expansion in mind in the future, okay. I guess is the, the most, uh, the best way to put it. Um, let's see, so. Oh, this was also very clever, I thought. Um, uh, if, if they could, they were going to work on this as uh, the consultants um, to, to allow people to have an online survey to go through and say what they wanted. And at the end, it would tally up the costs. And then they get another crack at it <laughs> when they see the damage that they've done to their tax base. Um, and go back and revise uh, revise their priorities if they so choose, which I thought was a very it's a very dynamic idea. Yeah, um, and we'll see if they find a way of figure out a way to do it. And that was suggested by the consultant. Um, you know, quite honestly, I don't remember. I, I yeah. believe so. I don't remember yeah. exactly who suggested. Yeah. But I thought it was a very clever. Idea. Yeah. So basically, that's. That's it, but this, the committees and consultants are doing a really thorough job. Great. Which is good to see. Thank you, Joe. Any others? Robin? Yeah, that's great. Um, well, I was at one of the um, round tables oh. at the community center. Yeah, and I found it really interesting. Did anybody else have a chance to go? Yeah, I was really glad I did. And there were some ideas that uh, I don't think had been heard before that were voiced. Uh, such as making the town center, this community center, welcoming to new neighbors. You know, mm -hmm. right? We talked about transportation issues. How do, how do people get there? Um, ah. and, uh, also, uh, one local um, businessman who owns the old roller rink and sports dome talked about, you know, collaborating with mm -hmm. the town and using, you know, as well as there's land that the town owns off of the a bypass that was also discussed. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, you know, either collaborating or using available resources rather than trying to purchase land. Yeah. Um, but I like, you know, and and the other thing about a community center that that I talked about is the whole idea of it, a place to gather. Yes. <laughs> Not yes. only just a place for activities, but an actual place where community members could meet up. Have a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. you know. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was great. That was pretty, mm -hmm. and I think it's a dynamic process and holds a lot of promise for you. Glad to hear it. Any other folks connect with their entity? I'll raise that I'm connecting, but I wasn't able to get on the conservation committee agenda for this month because I was too late. So I'm hoping to for their next meeting. Great, thanks, Angela. Um. I went through, we, we had a, um, a brief moment, I think, in our last month's meeting where we talked about, you know, some people have sort of lost track of what, um, who their liaison with, you know. Um, and so I just went through, and there, there are a couple of um, entities where, like, there is nobody right now assigned to uh, emergency services. Um, that may be an error on my part, but I don't. Is are you thinking it's you? Yeah, I thought I was. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mistake then. Thank you. That's great. Okay, I'm writing that down. Okay, um, and there's only one other one that, but but generally we're pretty uh, covered. Um, we haven't yet put Pam in anywhere. We're giving her some time to acclimate. 
um, fully. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know she's had a look at uh, that. Yeah, there it is. That's the liaison chart, which is more than most of us did in our <laughs> first few months. So, yeah. Um, any other closing comments before we actually adjourn early? Yeah, great. Um, so let's talk about um, having a presentation or meeting with the select board. Right. Uh, basic introduction of CPIC and the new members. Is that on the books yet? It is not on the books. Um, they had wanted to do it in the first half of February. Um, I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm away for a week. And we put in the um, thought that we'd like to schedule it in March. Um, my thinking as well into March as we can put it, <laughs> um, because it, we, it will take some time to prepare um, for that. And you know, if folks have sort of missed that discussion, the idea was to, you know, there are two new, brand new members of the select board and new leadership, and. Um, it would, it's a good opportunity to kind of look at with fresh eyes uh, the 2019 plan and how Recode um, addresses uh, quite a few of those big ideas. And uh, so to spend, you know, I'm guessing an hour and a half together talking about that. I think the, the pushing off and delay is just a little bit of a concern to me is as it? far as the introduction, the reviewing, and getting them on board with the timeline and the public release of the plan without their buy in on public release. That's all. Well, the select board had had a workshop no. on Recode, and there are two new two two new members. Um, they will be, you know, when we actually do a workshop on town center recode, um, which where is, let's see when that is going to be happening. That is going to be happening. We're looking at, uh, well, no, the workshops will be April, but they will be looking at the revised right. draft, which I think is, that's what we want. We yeah. want them to be looking at and, and, you know, there will be a red line available, but they will be, you know, we'll be sharing with them at that workshop, the revised draft, the map, all of that stuff. So um, we can dig into, you know, that and get their feedback on that and hopefully enthusiastic buy-in um, with new leadership. So our introduction workshop that you were talking about will be before that. That seems important. It will be hopefully about a month before, yeah. um, so that they, you know, they they sort of get the information about what the, the broad strokes about Recode contextualized within the plan. Um, and you know, my hope is that we can have a really robust discussion. Yeah, that's, you know, that was that my, time. Yeah, my only concern is if the we get that March one on the books because if that gets pushed to April, then that does that's, not. That's, that that's right. That's right. It does need to get on the books. So <laughs> thanks for that encouragement. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and as soon as that date comes out, I know that there's there's conversation happening um, to to actually determine a date. Any parting thoughts? Thank you, Dave, for joining us. We'll make sure that you have that. Um, select board workshop on the 2019 plan and yeah. the code yeah. as soon as we have it. Okay, we are adjourned and it is 554. Wow. Nice work. Night, everyone. All right, take care. Good night.